and beyond challenges for Europe. Gudrun, you have the floor. Thank you, Marta, and thank you all for getting me to this beautiful town of Riga. I really love this place. Now, I would love to talk a bit about dreams. Actually, in the leaked document that everybody is not supposed to know about, the Commission is dreaming of a digital single market, market for citizens and business in a way that you would say, hmm, they're really dreaming. That uh, small online businesses can start operating in just a click across the EU, grow fast, scale up, and, and sell across borders. Citizens as businesses enjoy the benefits of public and private services that are interlinked across the EU. All of the domains mentioned that are relevant. You know what? For the first time in a very long time, I find myself agreeing with the Commission and the EU. They dare to dream. And we need to dream, because if we don't have a vision and if we don't think for the future, we will not achieve anything at all. Innovators are there to realize dreams. And I dream of an EU where we stop having top-down decisions and directives, where we have a collaborative agreement with the understanding that we are not the same in any way. And I also dream of a situation where the citizen interaction is the norm and every government, city council and the European Commission mine the data of the citizens in multiple languages to underpin their decisions. What is wrong today? The European Parliament recently published a report saying that if we have a fully functional digital single market and a fully functional single market, we would gain 800 billion euro. In my business case, it normally means that if I can gain it and I don't, I lose this every single year. Basically, semantic interoperability has been touched upon by many here, uh, and in most cases, they are correctly addressing the issues, but ESAN is focusing on staying language independent. The part in red is the important one. They want to be linguistically neutral so that multilingual is not a blocking issue. But, sorry, there is nothing that is linguistically neutral. Actually, Roel Abril, uh, Paul Abril of ESANS said in the conference, in the ESANS conference in 2014, if one of the layers of the European in interoperability framework is not properly addressed, your interoperability project will fail. The ESA core vocabulary is a starting point which I think is very useful and it's a very good thing, but this very high level and has a very limited potential. It is like a travel plug that works between two systems with the same current. Semantic interoperability needs to go far deeper and have a more fine-grained approach. This is because of the fact that we all function like islands. We have internal operations, everything is a silo in the e-government sector. You have health distributed even in the same country into several regions like in Germany and that every single one of those regions is actually a silo and hardly communicates internally. And for the EU, they want to be dictatorial in, a dictatorial in the sense of top-down enforcement. Every country needs to take their top-down directives and implement them at a huge cost and it's getting less and less popular. We have a dysfunctional and unhappy union in many cases because of this. Actually, an interoperable EU can be achieved with the agreement to differ as long as it's possible to understand what the difference actually is. If you think beyond the ESA core of interoperability and you think of the structure of the silos, all of them are more or less the same. And actually an infographic here from Canada displays more or less what all governance does. Therefore, it is possible to have a governmental knowledge structure they actually share the meaning of everything that they're doing, even if it's expressed differently, and even if it is in a different language. But for the EU, this needs to be a multilingual structure. It cannot be a knowledge structure without multilingual content. 
we need to create multilingual knowledge systems. And multiple. There is not a single one that makes it. We need to be multi-domain oriented. How do we do this? For each domain that we want to address, we take what resources we have in different countries and we put them together. We actually merge them intellectually with both automatic means and human effort. This is a lot of work. And we concatenate them to make them into a single knowledge resource for every single domain. So the domain specific issues are, have to be addressed because that is knowledge. Basically, there are ways to semi-automate this, but we need to work. This is not solved. It's partly solved. We need to address this multilingually, and when we do, when we cross the borders and we go into other lines, they will be totally different, but they still need to interlink, and they need to come together because the relationship between the differences is key. Just think about one thing. If you say that in the US you have the death penalty, and if you say that in Europe you have life sentences, and every single life sentence in a different country, it means different things, 10 years, 15 years, 50 years. And if I link this to the knowledge that it's the sentence being for murder, I have a different story. I have world knowledge. I would like to show you one of the resources in what I call a knowledge system. That is Eurowalk, one of the greatest assets that the European Union has today. It's a very structured information resource. It can be used as a core and can be expanded. And I believe very firmly in that. And if you see on the side there, in the honor of, if it's visible, I'm not sure if it is, it's in Latvian and English, so that we have both languages active. Actually, at the switch of a button, you can change the languages in there. This also caters then for multilingual search. What can a multilingual knowledge system achieve? Well. This is just top of the iceberg. I mentioned some things here just to get your attention. As a citizen, you can put your CV into a system and the multilingual knowledge system can process it in all job ads and relate it and possibly find a, a job for you in any language across all of the EU. Great, right? You know what? The Commission is working on this and have been for about three years. And I think it's a beautiful prototype called ESCO. Local governance. Why are the citizens of Berlin so unhappy with the garbage services? What can I, as a politician, do to help improve this? This is a huge big data issue. Because where do they do it better than in Berlin? Maybe Paris, we don't know. Might be a multilingual scenario. Mining this is a wonderful thing. Okay. We're not there yet. Let's hope we are soon. But what about global business? You register your trademark in China. The multilingual knowledge system helps you do it in Lat Latvian and understand the difference in the legal issues. You know what, guys? That's done. The European Union leads the IP community totally by having the most functional, interoperable, cross-border, global cross-border success story, there is. It's 44 participating countries today and still expanding. It has all of the main industrial countries involved. The economic savings of this project that started more or less like an, shall we say, an industry agency collaboration with 160,000 uh, euro, sorry, tiny. Well, uh, it now saves millions for the member state administrations because they can centralize the registration services and they can actually use this jointly, and they do. The academic gains for the industry is far greater because this cuts down the administrative registration uh, time by almost half a year, and that is savings on a global scale because the IP community and especially trademarks stand for 4.7 trillion euro in um, economic uh, processing in, in uh, the EU annually. This is a win-win. The entire project, including work carried out internally, costs 
just about 30 million euro. And the largest cost was in the national administrations and the collaboration between the agencies and the, the national organizations. And if you want to register today, you can go online with the link below and in Latvian register your Chinese trademark. So basically for me, the key to successful interoperability is that we have to share ideas and we have to try to align map between concepts rather than trying to harmonize different world perspectives, which we would fail doing anyway. We have to do the things that we can do and we have to work on them to achieve high visionary goals. Thank you.